On the eve of D-Day, Julian Bud Rice flies an unarmored C-47, carrying 21 paratroopers across the English Channel and into a barrage of enemy fire. You could see the anti-flak burst coming from the ground and the tracer bullets coming up. It was almost impossible to avoid everything, so you were lucky just to take some machine gun fire. Your six-minute warning, rise and shine! As his C-47 enters the drop zone five miles from the French coast, 21-year-old Don Jakeway prepares for the most terrifying moment of his young life. The jump master stood there in the door. Go, go. And if you froze in the door, he had orders to shoot you. One, two. When we jumped, the bullets were going up. Uh, you could hear the zzzz, like going through your shoe. You know the Germans are there, and the moment you jump in as a paratrooper, you're surrounded and scared to death. 821 C-47s fly in the first wave. Astonishingly, all but 21 of them deliver their human cargo to the drop zone and return home safe, including Bud Rice. I was very fortunate. I came back safe and sound. Don Jakeway goes on to spend nearly eight months fighting his way through occupied Europe before being shot by a Nazi sniper. At a hospital in Belgium, he encounters an old friend. I can see this C-47. It was a hospital ship. It had all the bunks and wounded. Now the same C-47s that delivered paratroopers into battle become flying ambulances, often using roughly improvised airstrips. The plane they called the Goonie Bird evacuates three quarters of a million wounded men from all over the world. There was no sustained air transport enterprise that enabled the Axis powers to supply their forces routinely in the way that the Allies did, thanks largely to the C-47. The C-47 would also leave a lasting legacy on military strategy. When NATO responds to a crisis, how does it do so? It does so with modern airlift capability. And that modern airlift capability is rooted in the experience of the C-47 and the Dakota back in the Second World War. 